Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the part one of real estate photography. I guess you can call it a masterclass. It's been long, but there's so many awesome nuggets in that video. If you did not see that part one, I'll go ahead and link that over here or down in the description below so you can see all the details on how you actually captured the photography of the real estate properties for a real estate agent. So obviously it's a different day. And when I got to the office, when everything is shot, everything is captured, I absolutely, it's just like a given. I do not go to sleep until I back up my footage two times. I drop the footage through SD cards onto my computer because that's gonna be a project that I'm gonna be editing. Then I also back up all those files from the SD card and drop it on the external hard drive or SSD. In my case, SSD because it's faster. Always have a redundancy, always back up your footage because you don't want to clean out those SD cards and then all of a sudden you're missing something and something, oh, it's, it's the worst feeling ever when you don't have the footage. It is, uh. So just to be a safe side, drop it in two different locations and then we go to the editing software now software that i use there's two of them you can probably use a photoshop they're all really the same but i will mention in this video the software that is free so you don't have to spend any money at all but they all very very close to one another so the first thing is i'm using the photoscape x and Photoscape X is a one-time payment software. I have a video about it. I'm gonna link it down below on how to use the Photoscape X. And then the second software is Luminar Neo. And that's a really good software. It uses a lot of AI and I use some of the presets for to speed up my workflow. And I'm gonna talk about it in a different video so you can watch all the descriptive walkthroughs of that software. I'll make sure to share all the software I'm talking about in the description below. Some of them are not affiliated, some of them are affiliated, but either way, you will get value off of them. My main goal is to provide you as much value as possible. If you want to support the channel, you're always welcome to just click on one of the affiliate links. And when you purchase something, it gives me a kickback, supports my channel. You don't pay any extra. So let's support the channels that we love and adore. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and support the channels of creators like myself to just put out some knowledge out like this out to the world and make sure everybody learns and we all grow together. So uh, secure the cup or secure a poison of your choice. And let's go ahead and dive into my computer so I can share with you all the things that I do. So maybe you can implement that to your workflow. So let's dive in. Now, by opening up the Photoscape X, I select the folder that I have all the footage stored. I go to the view tab where I can just view everything that is in that folder. So at the top, as you can see, it gives me an option to filter just the raw photos. So I'm only going through the photos that are raw in this viewer tab. And if you remember during the shoot, I told you, make sure to take multiple shots of that same angle. So that's the reason why I'm right now going through all the raw footage and I'm selecting the ones that I will use. It's the most efficient way to edit footage when you are working in batch. And what I mean by that is just simply work on those that are start or selected or favored. Everything that I'm looking for, I'm looking for a quality, I'm looking for which one is the most amazing high dynamic range shot. Because in the first video, the part one, I showed you how to make sure to capture overexposed, underexposed, and normally exposed photos and put them together. So here I have some of those photos that are actually overexposed just a tiny bit. And majority of the time I actually choose the ones that are just a little bit overexposed. Since it is a raw file, I can always bring stuff down, but I want to choose the photos that are as close as possible to what I actually want it to look like. So let's go through all this footage right now. Okay, so now I picked all the photos that I would like to go ahead and edit and export to a different program. Now, what I will do is I'm simply selecting all the flagged ones, which is that's the favorite. And now what I will do is I'm gonna select all those photos and create an actual selected folder. Drag them all down to that folder. And here you are, all those photos that I actually flagged they're all neatly selected in one folder. Now, what I do is I select Luminar Neo. 
And Luminar Neo is an awesome program. It is a AI supported program. And that's one of the reasons why I love that software is because it is simplified to the point that I don't have to do some of the mundane tasks or something that can be done with one click using AI. I'm gonna take advantage of that. So let's go ahead and select the folder that I've actually created and we start editing. Okay, now goal of this batch editing is to make sure that I will edit one photo out of the set of photos that are exactly the same way lit, the same exact color grade, maybe the same room. And majority of the time, when you create a specific look, specific edit for one photo of one room as this shown over here, so we are using the kitchen, a specific lighting, specific time, and I'm gonna edit it, finalize everything, make sure I save it as a preset, and then I just simply add the preset that I've made for the other angles of that particular room. So it saved me some time on editing all the other photos just by copying this look to all the rest of the photos of that particular room, or maybe some other ones, depending on how close they look like, okay? So the first thing I would do is I would just go to develop because it is a raw file and it's gonna look kind of like, uh. So in this case, I'm gonna just give some noise reduction. As you can see, just a little bit of noise in those corners. So I'm gonna just simply add some uh, luminosity, add the auto diffringing optics, which is, I'm very happy that they give you some of those options. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of exposure, maybe just a little bit of highlights down, a little bit of exposure up to bring that brightness of that particular room, which is in this case is actually kitchen. And again, kitchen and bedroom, master bedroom is very, very important in the house. So make sure you take some time when you edit those. I'm gonna add a little bit of color, noise reduction, and just a little bit more luminosity. And I'm always watching what's happening. Keep in mind, based upon your computer power, majority of the time you would make adjustment and sometimes it takes a while to actually see that change that you do and you can see what's before and after look like. So now we're gonna work with some temperature. Just cool it down a little bit because it is just a tiny bit yellow. Add some saturation and I would decrease vibrance. And what it is is just that majority of time you see like the color cast of the wall. I don't need it. I need just a more saturation in colors. So I'm gonna lift just a little bit, lift some shadows. So you can see all the darker places of the picture. And you can see the before and after what it looks like. Also, I can play with a smart contrast, which just gives me a washed out look or more contrasty look. That's a strong, strong T. Okay, now after everything is done with the develop of the raw footage, we're gonna go to color tab and on color tab, I would change the actual hue of some of the colors. So as you can see with saturation, if I see too much green cast, I wanna take it away. So by going to saturation of the colors, I can pick exact color and just drop it down. If I don't wanna see a lot of magenta look on the picture, I just can drop that down all the way to zero. And as you can see how it looks, now, what I do is I simply go to preset and save whatever I've done, call it, call it kitchen. So if I'm going to other kitchen photos, I go to presets up top and then select the preset that I already made. So all those changes that I've created in the first photo, now you can see it's all in the second photo. And I move on to the next one. Now here's one thing that you can tell is some of those photos are crooked. I don't worry about that right now. My biggest deal is to make sure I do some of the presets and when the presets are done, only then I will do all the refining, all the cropping, all the zooming, all the patching of little imperfections that are happen to be there. Now, as you can see at some of them, you can totally use that same preset, for example, what the preset I've done for a kitchen, I can use the same preset and just change up a little bit. And it looks great on the dining room as well. And now you can always have a preset applied to a picture and you can adjust the percentage of that preset that will be applied to the same picture. 
let's go ahead and try the kitchen for that little bench by the window. A really interesting bench. I don't know what they're doing. It's like for meditations or whatnot, but who knows. But it looks great. Here in this photo, you can actually see how the highlights are definitely out there. The sun is out and it's just super bright, but you can simply drop the highlights down and you can see what it looks like behind the window. And here's the before and after, you can see how it looks like. I usually drop down the color temperature just to cool it down a little bit because usually it is pretty bright and warm when the sun hits it. I drop down the vibrance and add just a little bit of saturation. You can see the before and after what it looks like. This is the picture that I opened the door. Remember that little stopper, door stopper that I use for that door to be open and create that brightness when uh, you don't have lights that are pretty good because with these lights over here in the dining room, they're kind of terrible. And those door stoppers actually do magic when you actually use them, keep the door open, it brightens up your room that you're trying to film. And majority of the doors, especially on the commercial side, they are meant to be closed automatically. So with a door stopper, it definitely helps. So, okay, now save the preset and I'll call it the dining. Gosh, I hope I spelled it right. <laughs> okay, next move on. Simply apply the preset and it's ready to go, it's done. Move on to the next one. Restrooms, let's try the dining. Does it look good? Majority of the time I would try it. Would it make sense or does it make any difference of the presets that are already made? So in this case, I'll just go ahead and work on the restroom and make a preset for that. And now all I have to do is just go through all the photos, adjust and edit everything to the way it looks great and create those presets for every room and just reapply on all the other angles that I have for that particular room. And there's sometimes it works if you use some of the presets that you already made for the other rooms. So just give it a try before actually spending some time on a specific room. And I'll go ahead and speed up all this process of editing so we can get to more exciting parts. So guys, at this point, I'm going to be editing the photos that are outside. And for the outside, I do not care about, as you can see, some of the highlights on the skies and clouds are blown out. I do not care about it as much because with Luminar Neo, you can replace the sky and it, it does it fantastically. So I'm gonna show you how it's all done. So I'm right now making sure I'm concentrating only on the colors of the house, of the grass, and the surrounding trees and surrounding neighbors, maybe houses. And after it's all said and done, I go to Sky Replacement. And that is a fantastic AI tool that I wish that was a long time ago implemented in different softwares because it makes life so much easier. So here you select the sky and as you can see how it just simply changes everything to the different clouds and I can select which one that I really want. And you can see the before and after how it looks like magic. So I'll select the right clouds that would make sense for this. And I'll save it as a preset and I'll click it outside one. Then I'll apply it all the other stuff. So in this case, the clouds that are already there, they look beautiful. So I don't have to do a lot of things to replace the sky. But just so you know, that's an alternative. If you have a gloomy sky and you want to add some beautiful clouds, you can totally do that with Luminar Neo. And now I am applying the leveler tool. So I'm adjusting, cropping, making sure everything is leveled and everything looks good on every single photo. All the photos that I've have taken, as wide as it can possibly be, it is gonna be very good for me to allow the crop 
and I don't lose too much information. So that's the reason why I always love to be much wider than usually everybody else shoots, because that gives you some real estate to crop in, to adjust, to do what needs to be done to make sure everything is leveled and right. Now, the more fine micro adjustments I'll be doing on completely different software. Again, I'm going back to Photoscape X. So for that, I will make sure that select all the photos that are been edited and then click that export button, click disk. I will go ahead and create a new folder that I will call done. And that's the one that I'll be doing all the fine micro adjustments. I go to the options, make sure the export is good and I'm gonna go ahead and export. Depending on what kind of actual machine that you have, it will take time to export all those photos. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for that. Okay, export is done. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that folder. Go to selection done. And I really love to do is I'm gonna select all of them and just rename them to organize the actual footage because there's so many different cameras that I would use in different times. So now as I renamed everything Macintosh computers are amazing with renaming everything and just put in the right order so now I'm gonna go ahead to Photoscape X open up the done folder and start refining every single little detail and this is one of the best softwares to edit the photo let's go ahead and open up the first shot as you can see, you have my van that is sitting in the driveway. I specifically put it in the driveway with the shade, not going off the grass because all I can do is just simply select the clone stamp and I'll just simply clone the road that is a little bit behind and I just line up exactly where it starts, where it ends, the edges, and I'll just brush it off. And now voila, the van is gone. And that's the same thing with grass. If the grass looks ugh, I know the new owners will do a good job, at least better job than these owners. I'm just gonna cover it all up because we don't need that. So now I'm gonna go through every single photo, make sure that there's nothing that I need to just touch up or use the clone stamp or take something out that is just like a sore thumb. And here's one of the photos that I was telling you about where I needed to patch that uh, weird spot on the wall because the realtor and the buyer, they actually said that they're gonna be making sure that it's all taken care of before the sale takes place. I'm gonna go ahead and try to use the spot healing brush. It's actually not bad. And then I'm gonna lower the brush size for the other spot. And not bad at all, but I will still make sure that all the lines, everything is covered really well with the clone stamp. And I usually go by the seam. I'm just making sure that my mouse cursor is exactly on the line of that particular corner. Already looks better. Now here at this photo, you can see that I'm actually gonna be just touching up. I think it's like a, just a tape on the floor. And I did not bother to take it out when I was taking photos because I know I can use the clone stamp tool and just take it out. But it's easier to take out and post versus and if I would be picking that tape off the floor. Okay, so I'm done with all the photos. Now what I simply do, I resize everything to make sure it is a manageable size photo for the realtor to post on the platforms that they choose. And I usually do about 2050 pixels by 1150. And that's a perfect high quality image that I'm exporting to SD card or to a flash drive and delivering it to my realtor. Now, just so you know, almost everything that I do with these softwares, almost everything besides like AI, you can absolutely do. There's tons of free software. I'll make sure to show them all on the screen. One of my favorite free softwares that I've used personally, it was GIMP. It's something that you just go online, you simply use it, export the photos, do whatever you need to do. It's very close to Photoshop and it's free. You don't have to pay nothing. So you can start with that if you don't have budget to purchase some of those like one-time payment like Photoscape X or Luminar Neo. Go with all these free softwares for editing photos. 
Okay guys, if you enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to ask a question if there is any, like this video, share with a friend who actually is in this industry. Again, like it or hate it and subscribe or not, but always remember to stay awesome my friends and I will see you in the next video. See ya.